Lord, that you would be glorified, that you would be honored, that you would be lifted up in this place, Lord. Let everything that is said, everything that is sung, Father, be pleasing to your ears this morning. In Jesus' name. And Lord, we know that there are many that are absent today, not feeling well. And Lord, I pray that you would touch them right where they are, God. Lord, that you would bring restoration to their body, healing to their body. In Jesus' name, Lord, let them feel your presence all around them. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said, amen, amen. Would you hug someone's neck and tell me you're glad to see them? Let them know how good looking they are. Continue to worship in just a moment.
he'd come up to me and say, Pastor Ken, I'm really sorry. I'm stinky and smelly. I didn't get a chance to go home and shower. I go, brother, this is man factor, man. This is manly stuff. So we're okay with your manly smell. So there you go. Steve Ray, that's where you stand right here, if you don't mind. Uh, also, uh, Pastor Randy, Randy Curley, he came to every single one of them. And he's right there with us. And so Randy, there you go. He's always got that smell. I'm not sure what's up with that. But... Um, we're men here. Yeah. Cameron Kane. Cameron Kane. Uh, he came uh, just in the last couple. He couldn't be here because of finals, so we kind of excused him. But he was one of our faithful ones and was always here, usually early. And so, Cameron Kane, I'm uh, proud to, to have you on the, in this group of men uh, for the man factor. So, this is for you. Uh, Randy Morgan. Randy, if you come up. Randy, uh, he was another one that I'm not sure he missed any. I every single one of them, and we're proud. He lives uh, in, in uh, South Salem, and so he had to ride the bus, and oftentimes the bus didn't didn't come all the time, and so he had to get off early and walk a long ways, and, and uh, it was tough, but Randy, we are glad to have you as part of the Man Factor. Thank you for being with us. We're glad to time. Uh, also, Wayne Meadows. Wayne, Wayne, come on up. I don't think Wayne is any. Uh, Wayne was at every single tribute, and uh, this is for you, Wayne. Thank you so much for being part of the Man Factor. Also, Wayne cooked us dinner the very last night, so that's always a plus uh, for our celebration night. And then finally, this is kind of a special one. I don't know why it was at the bottom, but uh, save the best for last, I guess. Brother Daryl Gaylor. He does, he's not even a member of this church, but he came to almost every single one unless he was out of town doing district stuff because he's also one of the district overseers. So, uh, but he studied with us in, uh, in in this man series, man factor series, and it was just a privilege and honor to have you with us. I'll tell you what, it means a lot to me. I love all these guys, but it means a lot to me for a man like this, who's not even a member of our church, but part of our organization and part of our district, to support what we're doing here. It means a lot to us, and I really appreciate that. And I wanted to just. Uh, that mic right there. I wanted to give a couple of these guys just an opportunity to kind of tell you how the Man Factor impacted their lives and what it meant to them during this 13-week series. And so, uh, who would like to, anybody want to share, or do I just got to make you, put you on the spot? Anybody? Okay. Pastor Randy, let's start. I'll start it off. It's always the first person that breaks the ice. Uh, you know, Man Factor was really cool. Um, I've been a part of a lot of different, you know, men's groups in the churches that I've been a part of, and and this this group was we were family because we all you know, we all just talked we opened up and uh, it was really cool because it showed me that there's that there's things inside myself that I've never I've never really looked at I've never taken that time to actually look at it and and, and analyze myself so it really it, ask Michelle she's like she's like yeah I'm glad he's going because it's changing him. You know, he's doing stuff he never done before, so I'm like, yeah, I take the trash out now. So, <laughs> just kidding, I always take the trash out. But, anyways, it was awesome. Anybody else? Cameron, Wayne, I know Wayne's got something. Actually, for me, it was, it was um, also learning how to see more of how God sees me, too, through, through um, those kind of teachings. Always, what did you see? Wayne came all flustered this morning because he had his notes all prepared and then he forgot it and his computer didn't work or he wasn't able to print it. And Sometimes my computer won't recognize my, my internet. Even though it's plugged in, hardwired, it won't recognize it sometimes. I'm like, ugh. So I said, well, God's got to speak through you purely then. That's fine. Uh, anybody else? Cameron? Okay. What the man fact did for me is it helped me to find what man truly way all of society is, you know, this is what a man is, and just boiling straight down to what God defines a man as, and that's what man back to us. Amen, amen. How many of you ladies are, are glad for that? You're like, oh, thank you, Jesus, for this class. We appreciate that. <laughs> None of y'all? Yeah, some of y'all. Okay. Brother Darrell. Well, I want to say I really appreciate it also. It's great to uh, come to the class. This class is a great reminder of who we are as men. 
Richard, we are greatly privileged to have Pastor my brother Kevin. I don't really think he missed anything when he was teaching us in this class, and it brought a lot, I believe, a lot of things out of us. I like the Old Testament passage that says, uh, you know, iron sharp, sharpens iron, one man sharpens another one. And I, I love that scripture because uh, in the position that I'm currently in, I believe for me, for, for other people to see what they need to do is I need to be a good example. And so I try to be at every service that I can possibly be at, and also be part of these because I love Bible studies, I love being a part of that. And I just commend all of them in here because uh, it was great getting to know them, getting to know their personalities and so on. And uh, I'm really privileged. Amen. Thank you so much. It was an honor to have you with us. Hey, guys, if you'll step right up here, can uh, grab that picture. Come on up, Maria. We're going to take a picture right now. We don't normally do this, but I'm actually going to do this. Come set her right here. And uh, let's just, let's scoot over just a little bit. And while we're taking this picture, would you give them one more hand and applause for their
They need a peace that only comes from you, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would grant them that peace right now. In Jesus' name, there's some that are struggling. Lord, you know who they are. God bless them.
Saturday night is also our dessert theater here at Hawk Middle School. Um, and next Sunday morning is going to be a lot different than a normal Sunday morning is. Uh, we want the parents to be able to see what our kids do in, in kids' church. And we're going to give you an opportunity to sit in and watch Michelle teach them and see what they do for praise and worship. And actually, the kids will start in here with us. They will not go to class first. They will start in here with us. Kevin has a, uh, we're going to sing together, and then uh, you have a short word. Yeah, my message will be cut in half, if you can believe it or not. It's actually going to be cut in half. And so we're going to get out of here in 40 minutes. So we're going to have a 40-minute condensed service here uh, next Sunday so that all of our families can see what happens in the auditorium. Then we'll have a brief intermission with cookies and refreshments, and then we'll go right into the gymnasium to experience our kids' church in 40 minutes. They have also a 40-minute service planned out, and we get to worship with them and see their activities and their lesson plan and see how Michelle uh, teaches them and her helpers and everything. So it's going to be exciting. It's a, an opportunity to give our community as well a chance to see the whole church and not just part of the church. So that's exciting. We want everybody here, okay? If you were ever going to miss a Sunday, don't miss next Sunday because we're inviting our entire community to join us and we want them to meet you, okay? So please, please do whatever you can to make sure you're here. If you're sick, we'll just set up a sick area, all right? Then you can sit over there. But uh, just make sure you don't miss next Sunday. Yes, and next Sunday night for the dessert theater that actually starts at six, from 6 to 8 p.m., next Sunday night right here in the auditorium. So um, come, bring your friends, bring your family, bring your neighbor. Don't bring a new dog. I'm not sure if I'll set up a dog area, but <laughs> come and have a good time. Um, for anybody that is able to um, help make desserts for that dessert theater next Sunday night. We need your help. Um, I, we need your help making desserts, um, goodies, whatever. You could see me after church if you are available to help make desserts. Um, we're trying to get a count on how much we're going to have so we know how much we can help help you out. So um, see me after church if you are able to help make desserts um, for that. And that dessert theater is not just for our church. Again, we're inviting the entire community. But there are others that are coming from other churches as well and from out of town that are visiting. Um, so we're hoping to have 150, 200 people uh, packed in this place, so it's going to be a good time. We've got special guests doing music for us, and uh, the entire Pratt family is going to lead us in choruses, which I'm kind of excited about. So Bishop Pratt and his wife, and Melissa's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Melissa and, uh, I don't know, Chewy, you're going to be up there too. I think it's the Sister husbands, Elizabeth. the wives, uh, Sister Elizabeth, and the entire Pratt family is going to lead us in some choruses with the grandkids and everything. It's going to be a special family time, and I'm looking forward to that. So don't miss it. We also have the youth are doing a skit. The children are doing a special song. There's going to be some special readings and, and uh, poems. And it's going to be a really good time. So you want to make sure that you're here for the Christmas dessert and invite your family and friends and neighbors and, and whatnot. So. Yes. And then finally, our last announcement. Um, we will not be having church on Sunday morning. Christmas is on a Sunday morning this year. We will be having a special Christmas Eve service here on Saturday night. So and that's a candlelight forget. service. So it's a one-hour candlelight, candlelight service with communion yeah. and, a, and a brief Christmas message that we're going to share with the community. So and that will be from seven to eight o'clock on Saturday night. Right. So that you can spend time with your uh, family on Christmas morning. And then um, don't forget that the Truett family is a little crazy. We do some strange things, you know. The Truett tradition. And every Christmas morning, we have a tradition of showing up at IHOP. In our pajamas. In our pajamas. Uh, I hop on Lancaster. Um, a couple of families that are here today actually joined us last year for our IHOP tradition. Yeah. And it was a great time. And I don't know how many of you know people, or maybe you yourselves have to work on Sunday sometimes. But Christmas morning, there are lots of people that have to go out and work uh, to provide for their families on Christmas morning. And one thing we like to do is we show up at IHOP on Christmas morning. We, call, we get a gift, or we bring a special loaded, loaded card, and we give it to our server just to bless her for working on for Christmas him. Day. For him. For him. It's never been a hand, but... I don't think we've had a hand yet, but, but whoever it is, <laughs> we like to bless our server and thank them for working on Christmas Day. It's, it's our an opportunity for us to bless outside of our families. It's 
last step on things, um, having to give a little bit extra on Christmas morning. So we um, asked those that joined us last year to bring a gift or bring a card, something for the server. And our ser it's just, it's fun to see someone's face light up because they might show up to work on Christmas morning totally dragging their feet. They don't want to be there. They want to be home with their family. And they get somebody that comes in and brightens their day. So just to see their face light up um, because somebody decided to think about them that day is just wonderful. So we it's called Bless see Your it. Server. Bless Your Server, and everyone here is invited. <clears throat> Last year we took up probably a fourth of IHOP. We took their whole extra room, and it was a lot of fun. We took pictures. Our server was crying. She got lots of gifts, and I think her tip was well over $140 that year. And uh, uh, it's always exciting to bless our server and do something extra out into the community. And so normally Christy and I bring a gift, and we just all sign a card. But last year, I think more of you family brought gifts. So she had, like, tons of gifts to open. That was always exciting. And in fact, uh, we started this tradition on our own um, back in Washington State. As a family tradition, we would take one of our neighbors and just kind of bless our neighbor and kind of do something outside of our family. And then, of course, our family chipped in too and got in there and went to IHOP with us. And we were always doing that. And the first time we did it in Oregon, we did it with uh, Connection Life Church, the, the ones that were there when we first started. And uh, Jerry and Sonia showed up. They were there at IHOP with us at Bless Your Server. And I'm telling you what, it's quite a sight to see Jerry in his pajamas. I'm telling you, if you've never seen that, that's always a, a fun thing, too. So you just got to come just for that part. I mean, that would be great. So uh, you don't have to come in your pajamas. We encourage you to. That's just our true tradition, and we invite you to all be a part of that. Okay, so no service on Christmas morning. It's Christmas Eve instead, all right? One last thing, and I'll get into this, is that... Uh, Randy is desperately trying to sell these fundraiser books from Burger King, and it is a fantastic deal. If you're going to eat out anyway, and you're going to go fast food, it's $5 for this book, and your first meal is absolutely free. Your first meal is $5.69 if you're getting a Whopper meal, and that takes care of that. So <coughs> you're all set up. You need to see a teenager or see Randy. He's got him at that table and whatnot, so, so make sure you pick one of those up. And also, I think he was asking if any of you parents, or even if you don't have teens, if you have an office that you work at or somewhere where you can take some that you know people might take these up, you know, grab a stack from Randy. He'll check them out to you, and you can sell them at work or wherever you go. And, and uh, let's, let's get these youth to winter camp, all right? I just got to give props to, to one of our newest teenagers. Her name's Hannah. She's up here in the front row. And I've already embarrassed her a ton since she started coming, so I'll just embarrass her one more time. But she's already sold 18 books just since last week when we started. So she really needs to sell 12 more. And she goes to camp absolutely paid for. Twelve more and she goes to camp absolutely paid for. Good job, hon. We appreciate you and the work that you're doing. And she's already bugging Randy today. Can I get more books? I need more books, you know, so. All right. This morning we're going to finish up or closely finish up our series that we've been on in the last few weeks called The Perfect Gift. We've all wanted that perfect gift. For me, it was a Bentley. That's my per If you could get me the perfect gift, it would probably be a Bentley. I love cars. That's a, that's a wonderful gift for your pastor if you ever want to. Listen, you know, I don't claim to be, I don't claim to be one of those, uh, one of those uh, TV evangelists and all that stuff. Yeah, that's my car right there. Look at that. Is she beautiful? Is she beautiful? I'm not going to say anything, but uh, I know, Pastor, that their church got him one for Christmas one day. Uh, Pastor Appreciation, they bought him a Bentley. So I know we're not quite there yet, but, you know, I'm just trying to put a seed in your brain. You know, you know, we're not quite there yet, but, hey, you know, you just got to plant that seed. Some trees take a long time to produce the fruit. We know that, you know, and I'm okay with that. I just want to plant it now so that way when that fruit comes, you know what I want, all right? Uh, my wife, her, her perfect gift is a is a uh, Maserati Quattroport, a Maserati Quattroport. It's only $175,000, that's all. You know, so once you get me my perfect gift, then you might think about her and uh, plant another one of those trees, you know what I'm saying? So we all have our perfect gift that we would love to have. For me, I like cars, you know, but then sometimes the perfect gift is, is, you know, just something that maybe someone special made for you or someone special gave to you, you know? Uh, when my kids, you know, I have three kids, and when they're, they're little, you know, they make you stuff, and you don't really know what it is. Like, Daddy, I made what is it, you know? Well, don't you know what it is? Yeah, yeah, that's a dog. No, it's not, you know? But it's special to you, you know, and because they made it, you know? So that's a duck. I'm like, oh, yeah, I meant duck. I meant duck. That is the most beautiful duck I've ever seen, you know? Because they made it. That's 
the perfect gift. Now we wonder, what is that perfect gift? Well, we were going to finish that series today, but I want to tell you the story real quick just to kind of get you warmed up this morning. There was an art contest held at a local school one Christmas season a few years ago in East Texas. Now, how many are from the South? How many of you are from the South? Okay, so you'll get this. One of the prize winners was a picture drawn by a nine-year-old boy showing three men, obviously the wise men, right, offering gifts to the baby Jesus in his manger. What made the picture unique is how the three gift presenters arrived. And in the picture, the young boy had them arrive in a big fire truck. In a big fire truck. And one of the, one of the art uh, judges said, well, what made you think to, to have them come in a fire truck? And the young boy, without even hesitating, quickly replied, he quickly replied, well, the Bible says that the wise men came from afar. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not from Texas, so maybe I don't got that one right, but if, if someone comes from afar, then you get a fire truck, right? Okay. On Christmas afternoon, the pastor's wife dropped into an easy chair saying, boy, am I ever tired. Her husband looked over at her, not this pastor's wife, but her, her husband looked over to her and said, you're tired. I had to conduct two special services last night, three today, and give a total of five sermons in 48 hours. Why are you so tired? And she says, well, dear, because I had to listen to them all. <laughs> I don't know if my wife gets tired of me. One more, one more. A 10-year-old who was becoming quite knowledgeable about the Bible because of her grandmother's teaching asked her grandmother, Hey, Ma Grandma, which virgin was the mother of Jesus? Was it the Virgin Mary or the King James Virgin? <laughs> anyway, that was cute. You never know what, what the youngsters are hearing nowadays. you got to clarify. So, All right, let's get into the Word of God. Uh, we're still in the same text as we were for the last few weeks. And so we want to turn to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, and we're going to be in 26 through 45. But today, we're going to start in 41. We've been in 26 through 45. Today, we're going to start in verse 41. We've already talked about some of the reasons why Jesus is the perfect gift and why we deserve it. There are times when someone gives you a gift and you feel so undeserving. You feel like you're not, you don't deserve that gift. And why in the world would you receive such a gift, such a perfect gift? Well, oftentimes we don't deserve it, but we receive it anyway. There are many times where my wife shares a lot of love with me. She shares lots of love that I just don't deserve. I might be a crummy husband one day, yet she still loves me. I don't always deserve that, but yet she still loves me. There are times when my children, they get a gift that they really don't deserve, but they get it because they're our children, and we love them, all right? If we only got what we deserve, guess what? We'd all be fried up, chicken fried, coals, black, charred with smoke coming, because we'd be on fire, right? If we got what we deserve, we'd already be in hell today. Right? That's what we deserve because we're a broken people born into sin, already messed up. I mean, just that's what we deserve. Right? That, at least that's how we believe. But guess what? I've got news for you as your pastor. There's some good news. And the good news is, is that Jesus Christ was the perfect gift who was sent to die on the cross to redeem you and I so that when we didn't deserve it before, now we do. Why? Because we serve a God that has redeemed us. We serve a God that has sanctified us. We serve a God that forgave us and bore the stripes on his back that our sins would be paid for. I don't know about you, but if you ever get a ticket, now I don't get tickets. That would be my wife's category. Now she will argue with me that she's never got a ticket. But it ain't fair that you look that good when you're doing the same thing I am. You're doing the same thing I am, but you get away with it, and I don't. I don't, so I don't even count that score, okay? But you know, if you get a ticket, wouldn't it just be nice if someone said, you know what, I got that ticket for you. Sharia, I got that. Oh, she reminded me today, I don't drive. I don't have my license. Like, well, one day you will, and, and if you ever get a ticket, wouldn't it be nice if someone just ripped up that ticket for you? So, you know what, I got that. I got that. What if you did something that you had to pay a big, hefty fine for, and someone just came up to you and just forgave you of that fine? So, you know what? Don't worry about that today. You're like, what? 
You'd be going home talking about it. You'd be telling your neighbor. You'd be telling your coworkers. Like, you won't believe this. I was caught doing 175 in a 75. Wait, that would be a really fast car. But I'm going fast, right? I'm going fast, all right? I don't know about you guys, but you, you should be ashamed of yourself if you're going 45 in a school zone. You know, so I'll just say that one right there. I hope y'all don't do that. I'm just making, you know, making this really dramatic and big, okay? So you're going 45 in the school zone. You're, that's a big, hefty ticket. In fact, you're lucky they don't throw your tail in jail, right? Because that's like the worst of it. So you get you get this big fine, and you got to go before the court. You go before the judge. The judge says, oh, I hereby, I hereby sent you to freedom. You're like, what? But I messed up. Yeah, but someone else paid your ticket for you. What? Boy, you be jumping and dancing and hooping and hollering and telling all your, that was a real weird hooping and hollering, huh? Like, yeah. You know, you be dancing, you know, even if you can't dance like me, you be dancing. You be telling everybody about it. You, you be doing the small dog, you be watching the big dog, you know. You be doing all that stuff because someone paid the price for you. I'm here to tell you, when you feel like you don't deserve the perfect gift, all of a sudden, you serve a risen Savior, and now you do. Now you deserve it. Well, why? Because you carry the right name. You carry the right name. I know a lot of people in life that receive an inheritance from their family. They don't really deserve it. They didn't really work for it. They didn't put the time, the effort. They didn't build the company. They didn't even work for the company. But somehow, they inherited all this wealth. They didn't really deserve it. But, you know, in their argument, in their defense, guess what? Yeah, they do. They do deserve it. Why? Because they hold the right name. They were born into the right family. But they didn't do anything to deserve it. Yes, they did. They were born into the right family. You say, well, what does that have anything to do with me? You, my friends, were born in the right family when you chose to serve God, when you chose to give your life to Christ, when you chose to give your heart to Jesus, when you chose to say, God, I want to make you my Savior. You're my Abba Father. When you made him your daddy, guess what? You just jump ranks with a family that you don't deserve all the stuff that comes with that family, but you're going to receive it. Why? Because you are in the family. And even though you may say you've been adopted into the, into the, the family of God, guess what? Even adopted children get all those rights. In fact, adopted children oftentimes get more rights than the birth children because the birth children can be cut off at any time. But an adopted family, they can't be cut off. An adopted child, they can't be cut off. It's against the law to cut them off. It's, it's, I mean, there's some really technical things. I don't know all about it, but Randy does. They have a son, and it's tough sometimes. You know, I mean, they've never tried to cut them off, but you wouldn't, you know, because an adopted child sometimes has more rights than a birth child. It's weird, but that's it. And when you've allowed yourself to be adopted into the family of God, guess what? You get an inheritance that you don't deserve because you didn't build it. You don't deserve because you weren't part of the company. You didn't deserve because you were perfect. You deserve it because now you are legally part of that family. And now you have an inheritance. How many of you would love to just, without any, any strings attached, you don't have to go to their house for Thanksgiving or nothing, but you'd like to just be adopted into the Bill Gates family just for uh, an inheritance. Or yeah, you'd be like, yeah, I'll, I'll be your son. Yeah, do I have to come over for Thanksgiving? No, oh, I'm there, I'm so your son, you know what I mean? Why, because there's an inheritance with that name. Well, we should be excited about the inheritance we have with Jesus Christ. We should be excited about the inheritance we have with our Heavenly Father. We should be excited about the inheritance that comes with salvation and holiness and righteousness. I throw in that holiness and righteousness in there because guess what? You might have an inheritance whether or not you're holy or righteous, but if you're saved, you've given your life to Christ, you've been sanctified, and you've been forgiven, and you and you are, are, are making him your Lord and Savior, and that's great and all, you have an inheritance coming. But I'll tell you what, if you serve a God and live holy and live righteous and live, there's some added benefits. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> there's some added benefits when you live a righteous, holy life. There's some added benefits. It's called ridiculous favor. Remember that? Ridiculous favor. This church has been experiencing ridiculous favor since day one. 
Pastor Marlando from Portland, now he's in Pasco again. He came in, he spoke a word, he called it ridiculous favor. And I'm telling you, we have some ridiculous favor. Up about here, we have some ridiculous favor. You know? We have ridiculous favor with this school. They'll pretty much let us do anything we want with anything they have. They've given us ridiculous favor. They love us here. They love us here. You know, and Pastor Randy was putting together the, the fundraiser that even Randy Morgan, he's the one who turned him on to that. We're putting it together. You're supposed to pay $100. You know, it's a dollar a book, and we get $4 for everyone that's sold. He's supposed to pay for that in advance. He gets there, talks to the regional manager, gets with the regional manager, says, oh, no, no, just go ahead and take it. You can pay for it after you sell it. Folks, that's ridiculous favor. That's not the rules. They break the rules. Remember what we talked about? God will break the natural rules in order to keep his supernatural rules. See, his supernatural rules, it supersedes the natural rules. And when you're not supposed to get the books until you paid $100, that's when God says, no, 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 I'm going to break that natural rule because I want some supernatural to happen. Amen. And he'll do that for you. That's God working on your behalf. It's the perfect gift. It is the perfect gift. The gift of salvation. The gift of Jesus Christ. We talked about these perfect gifts. I totally, that was not in my notes. I apologize. Number one, we talked about the perfect gift being incomprehensible. Remember, we can't even comprehend it. Mary couldn't even comprehend it. She couldn't believe it. She's like, when, when the angel came and said, you are to have a child. She's like, what? You see how old I am? Do you, you get this? I've been barren. She couldn't understand it. And oftentimes, the perfect gift is incomprehensible. We also learned, number two, the perfect gift is only for you. Talk about customization. God got a gift for you, and it's customized for you. I don't know what your life is like, but he does. I don't know what you've been through all your life, but he does. I don't know what your future beholds, but he does. I don't know what your neighbors are like, but he does. I don't know what your boss is like, but he knows. He has customized a gift in his Holy Spirit just for you. That makes it a perfect gift. It's perfect, customized, just for you. You say, but I don't, you don't know what I've been through. I don't need to know because his gift for you is just for you. He's customized it. He knows what you've been through. So he's customized it just for you. Number three, we learned that the perfect gift is empowering. It's empowering. God, when, when, when Mary was supposed to give birth to a child, she had no power to do that. Her body was not functioning to do that. She was older in age. There was no way she was having a child. But when the Spirit of God comes over her, and the Spirit of God empower, or, or gives her that gift, then it empowers her to, to receive that which she needs to receive. There will be times where you feel weak, you feel inadequate, but God's gift is perfect, and it will empower you. We also learned that your perfect gift is a testimony. We just talked about that. When you receive the perfect gift, you want to talk about it, right? You want to go share it with the world about it. I'm telling you, if, you, if, you, if, if this church blessed their pastor with the perfect gift in the form of a Bentley, I, I guarantee you I'm calling all my friends saying, oh, man, you won't believe this. This is a perfect gift. You wish you were a pastor in Salem. That's all I know, you know, because they got the perfect gift. I'd be calling everybody I know, letting them know just because I was so excited to receive that perfect gift. Right? Now don't 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 throw tomatoes at me. My pastor's so materialistic. All you can talk about is his Bentley. Listen, I got lots more that I can tell y'all want to. I'm just saving that for later, you know? So so I'm actually holding back, alright? So just so you know. Alright, so <laughs> number five, let's move on. Number five, we'll finish this out today or at least come close. I'm gonna actually wrap up the perfect gift next week during our open house. But number five. Verse 41 in chapter 1 of Luke. Verse 41 says, At the sound of Mary's greeting. Now imagine this. Elizabeth just found out that she is going to have a child as well. In her old age, she was barren, but somehow, some way, she's going to have a child. Now Mary was another story, right? I kind of I was getting ahead of myself. Mary was just a virgin. She had never been with a man. How could she possibly have a child? But God empowered her through, through his Holy Spirit, right? But Elizabeth, she was barren. There's no way she's having a child. She was older and barren. But she just found out she was going to have a child. So Mary goes to greet her. Now get this, verse 41. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth, Elizabeth! 
And at the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child within her leaped. Her child leaped within her. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Talk about the perfect gift. The perfect gift is influential. What do I mean by that? Well, the very presence of Mary influenced Elizabeth's fetus, the child within the womb. Just the very presence of Mary in the room caused this child within Elizabeth's womb to leap with joy. Talk about influence. Wouldn't you like to have that kind of influence? I know a kid that has that kind of influence. Justin Bieber. Is that how you say it? Justin Bieber? Like, he just walks by and everybody goes, ah! There's a commercial that even shows grown men. Justin Bieber went, ah! You know, I mean, that's some influence right there. That's the kind of influence I want to have. And I don't want grown men screaming at me, ah! You know, I mean, you know. Brother Daryl screams when I walk by, I'm like, oh, dude, come on, man, stay cool. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the influence that Mary had. She walked in and she had so much influence that a baby in the womb of a mother left for joy. That's some influence. That is some influence. When you walk with the gift of God, people will take notice. Do you know you can have that same kind of influence? It doesn't have to be the form of a baby in your womb. It's just his Holy Spirit, the perfect gift that resides within you. And when you walk into a room, there will be people that take notice. When you walk into the room, there are people in your mind, you got the perfect gift, don't you? How'd you know? I don't know, but I can feel it. I can sense it. Did you know that even people who don't know the Lord will be influenced by the perfect gift that resides in you? Because that's how holy he is. That's how righteous he is. That's how perfect he is. And when you receive that perfect gift within you, and that Holy Spirit dwells inside of you, it will influence others when you didn't even know it was going to. You walk into the room and people start taking notice. They wonder what you have. Why are you always so happy? Why are you always so cheerful? Why don't you ever get upset? Don't you get mad at anything? Sure I do. I get mad at things. But I'm just always happy. I don't know why. It's because of the Holy Spirit, the perfect gift that resides within me. That is the perfect gift. Yeah. So, well, don't you ever have a bad day? Sure I do, but I can still rejoice in the Lord because I have the perfect gift residing in me. Don't you ever have a bummed out day when you're just depressed? Not really. Sure, there's things that bum me out, but I rarely have a depressed day. Why? Because I have the joy of the Lord in me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. You know that song. Remember that song? The joy of the Lord is my strength. You know, so we got that song because the joy of the Lord is in me. That's a perfect gift. It is a perfect gift. It's influential. Jesus inside of you will bring comfort to others. Did you know that there's people that will actually feel better when you're around? You don't even have to say anything. You don't have to talk. You don't have to do anything. Just when you're there, they feel I'm just so glad you're here. You don't even have to say anything. Just you being here means the world to me. Why? Not because of who you are. Not because of who we are. Not because we look good that day or we smell good that day. It's because there's a presence inside of us that is calming and soothing and brings a peace that passes all understanding, a joy unspeakable that's full of his glory. When you have that perfect gift residing in you, you just have to walk in a room and people will start to calm down. It's true. It's influential, the perfect gift. Jesus in you will bring happiness to others. It will bring healing to others. Number six, the perfect gift is revealing. This is an interesting one to me because as you read the story, you wonder how in the world did some of this happen? How in the world did this happen? In verse 42, it said, Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, now, Mary's walking in to share her the news. Mary's coming in to tell Elizabeth the news. But as she walks in, Elizabeth cries out. 
Elizabeth cries out and says to Mary, God has blessed you above all women. That's pretty cool. And your child is blessed. And then in verse 43, Elizabeth looks at Mary. Now, mind you, Mary hasn't said a word yet. Mary's just coming in to tell the story. But Elizabeth cries out before Mary and says in verse 43, why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should visit me? Verse 44. When I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Mm. Now I have a question. How in the world did Elizabeth even know that Mary carried her Lord? But without question, Elizabeth looked at Mary and said, whoa, whoa, whoa. How am I so honored that the mother of my Lord is in my presence? I'm telling you, when you carry the perfect gift of Jesus Christ, people will know. It will be revealed to them. The perfect gift is revealing. Oh, that gives me chills. The perfect gift doesn't need to be introduced. It didn't need to be, hey, make way, because someone that is filled with the Holy Spirit has walked into the room. No one needs to announce it. It's just revealed through your love, through your grace, through your mercy, through your forgiveness, through your kindness, through your understanding, through your compassion. The love of God, the perfect gift, is revealed through His Holy Spirit working through you. And the Holy Spirit was in Mary. And when that Spirit walked into the room, when Mary walked into the room, that Spirit was there. It revealed to Elizabeth, hold on, there's something different now. There's something different. How did Elizabeth know that the baby inside her was jumping for joy? Because I know when Cameron was inside his mama, every once in a while he'd give a hi da You know, but mama wasn't going, oh my gosh, she's so happy. <laughs> no. Christy wasn't saying, oh my gosh, Cameron must be so jumping for joy. It probably wasn't that. It was like, oh, would you move it? I'm not comfortable. Like, get me out of here. You know, I mean, that's probably what Cameron was saying inside the womb. I don't remember. Do you remember, son? Yeah, yeah, he remembers. <laughs> it was just like that. You know, but, but how did Elizabeth know that the baby inside of her was leaping for joy? It's because of the presence of the Holy Spirit that just entered the room. It's revealing. It's revealing. The perfect gift identifies who you are. It will identify. The perfect gift will identify who you are. You know, the, car, the type of car you drive, it will identify who you are. The type of jewelry you wear, it will identify the type of person you are. The type of clothes you wear, it will identify who you are. Right? But we need the gift of his presence in us to identify who we are. We really do. And you say, well, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover. Well, you might be right to a certain extent, but you stand 10 people right up here, and you observe what they're wearing on their, as far as jewelry and their clothing, and then you watch them get into their car, I guarantee you I can nail them every time and tell you exactly what kind of person they are. I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I know y'all got me nailed, so why can't I understand it? You know, y'all know who I am. Y'all know, you say, well, you always wear those weird shirts, and, and you know, and you don't wear a tie enough, and you know, you're in the Buicks, and uh, you know, what does that mean? You know, I just, uh, you all got me nailed. You can tell a person by what they look like, can't you? By how they act, by how they talk, by how they respond. The perfect gift is revealing. We need Jesus Christ to be that perfect gift in our life. It will reveal who we are through Christ in Him. Amen? Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you know who I am. Come on, phone phone, say, you know who I am. Do people see the gift of Jesus in you? What does it tell them? Finally, the perfect gift is a response. And this was special. This was special. Let me read to you verse 45. Verse 45 says, you are blessed 
because he believed that the Lord would do what he said. Now listen to me. When Gabriel appeared before Mary and said, you are about to be, uh, you're about to have a child. Now, Mary could not believe it. I mean, she would just not believe it. But when the angel said, and I've got more news for you, Elizabeth also is with child. Okay, now, when you, when you say Elizabeth, you mean like she's actually pregnant? She's with child. That would be almost like me saying today, I got an elephant today, Sister Elizabeth is with child. And everybody goes, what? <laughs> right? I mean, every she and herself are like, come on, Ken, you're speaking devilish now. <laughs> that way we would not accept it. But when Mary heard that Elizabeth was with child, it did something to her that said, well, if it can happen for her, it surely can happen for me. I believe. Now, when you believe, that you are able to receive, God ends up responding with the perfect gift. When you, let me say it one more time. When you believe that you are able to receive, God responds. Why? Because we know it's the faith. Hebrews 11, 1, faith itself speaks hope for the evidence of things what? Not seen. When you have that kind of faith to believe in that which has not even yet manifested itself, God responds by manifesting. <laughs> You've got to believe. One of my favorite artists, hip-hop artists, now this is going to tell you how old I am. One of my favorite hip-hop artists growing up was MC Hammer. <laughs> That's right, it's Hammer Time. You remember Hammer Time? He had the big parachute pants. I had those pants. <laughs> you know? Chris is what you still have those pants. <laughs> you know? MC Hammer. You remember Hammer Time? He, he went on to be this really thug rapper, and I don't know, he was trying something new of the world. It didn't quite work out for him, so he went and turned to Jesus, and now he's preaching all over TVN and everywhere. He's got ministries everywhere. And I knew, because... Just so you know, I, I, I take a little bit of responsibility for his salvation because I always told God, God, if you just saved this boy, we'd have a great ministry right here, you know. I said, I love his music, but he's secular, you know. But if you just saved him, you'd have something special, special. So he ended up getting saved, and I take a little credit for that because I prayed for his salvation. Then my mama let me listen to him, you know what I'm saying? So, so he got saved, now he's preaching all over TVN. And uh, he wrote a song before he even went into the Christian ministry. He wrote songs, and some of his songs was, uh, you got to pray just to make it today, right? You've got to pray just to make it today. And then I remember him singing, you know, uh, all kinds of songs that, that were inspirational and, and, you know, about your faith. But if we just believe that we can receive, God will respond in accordance to your faith. According to your belief, he says, you have received this child. Why? It's very clear. You are blessed because, because you believe. You say, well, Pastor, why am I not blessed like that? I don't know if you have a because. Do you have a because? That sounds kind of funny, huh? Do you have a because? I have a because. Well, because what? Because I believe. Because I believe. I, that's my because. Why? Because I believe. Well, why do you think you're so special? Because I believe I am. <laughs> why do you think you're going to be blessed? Because I believe I'm blessed. You know, why do you think you're going to be healed? Because I believe I'm healed. Why do you believe you're not going to get sick? Because I believe I'm not going to get sick. Now, I'm not a name it and claim it type of preacher, but I do believe that if you believe, you can receive. That's how I believe. So if you believe, if it worked for Mary, listen, it can work for me. Let me just tell you that right now, okay? If it can work for Mary, and it says clearly, I'm not making this up. You read it on the screen, it's in your word. She received it because she believed it. So if you can believe, you can receive your perfect gift. And I just believe it. I just believe it. I was in southern Florida 
well, not necessarily Southern, but in parts of Florida doing a, a, a not necessarily revival, but I was ministering in Florida for a little bit. We were at a church there, and I was shacked up in one of these families' homes, a host home, and I had a dream. I had a dream that I was married. I was all excited because I believed. I believed she was blonde. I believe she was a certain height. I believe she had little lips, not big lips. No offense to those of you with big lips. I mean, big lips are fine for you and fine for others, but I wanted a girl with little lips, okay? It's no different than me wanting a blonde, okay? Just so you know, I'm not making fun of big lip girls or brunettes, okay? But I believe, oh man, I gotta get off. Okay, I believe that she was blonde, she was this high, and she had little lips, and she was the perfect one for me, and I just believed it. That dream was so real. Have you ever had a, a dream that was so real like you thought you were actually there? So I woke up, and that dream was so real, I thought I was engaged. So I started telling everybody, my host home, and I go, you never believe this, I'm engaged to be married. Like, you're supposed to be the preacher, dude. What do you mean you're engaged? I didn't even know you were dating. I'm not! <laughs> what do you mean you're not? Well, who's this girl? I don't know! Well, what do you mean you're getting married? I don't know, but I'm getting married. I saw her in my dreams. Not only that, you're going to be married in 13 months. They say, Kevin, what do you mean 13 months? I don't know, but that's what I saw in my dream. We're married in 13 months from now. I will be married to her. She looks like this. I was telling them all about it. I was so excited. I was telling people I was pretty much engaged. They thought I was crazy. I don't know. They haven't invited me back to preach there anymore. I don't know what the deal is. But, I mean, I saw it. I believed it. And I know that if I believe, I can receive. And I moved on to Washington State. Took a, a job there as a youth pastor there. It wasn't much longer after that. There was this girl that visited our church in the front row with her family. I thought she was one of the teenagers. I was a youth pastor, so I was going to invite her to youth group, you know. So I go, she was sitting about right where that girl was sitting right there. And uh, so I walk up, and I introduce myself all the way down the line. I introduce I was myself to the dad, and the dad, instead of me, instead of me inviting her to, to youth group, the dad looks at me and says, well, I want to introduce you to my good-looking, young, single, 21-year-old daughter. I'm like, what? Hello? You know, I'm like, oh my gosh! So that changed some things, you know, so I invited her to our college functions. We started hanging out, we dated for six months. We were engaged for six months. And 13 weeks, almost to the day of that dream, my wife and I were married. And now we've been married going on 16 years this March. Listen, I got my numbers wrong? A little bit, that's okay. She said, that's okay, we know what you're saying. <laughs> but it was almost to the day that my dream came into reality. Why? Because when you believe, you can receive. Please don't write me letters saying, oh, I can't believe Pastor Kevin's going to a name and claim it. No, I'm just saying, you got to believe just like Mary did. Mary received the perfect gift because she believed. That's what the Word of God says. I like saying it like this. Mary believed, so Mary conceived. I did not know. <laughs> Now, y'all don't need to be repeating that for yourself, all right, unless you want to, but, you know, it's up to God, right? So, Mary believed and received. We need to believe in the perfect gift for us. This Christmas, I don't know what you want. I don't know if you want that Bentley. I don't know if you want Tonka trucks. I don't know if you want a new Xbox or whatever you want. I don't know. You know, my wife, she comes up with the craziest things because every time about this year, we go to the bazaar, the holiday bazaar, the fair, the, you know, the Christmas show and all that. So all of a sudden, she wants the perfect gift, and it's like some kind of weird dish with jalapenos and you grind stuff. And I'm like, what is that? I don't know, but she wants one really bad. <laughs> you know? So, you know, we get to come up with some weird perfect gifts. I don't know what your perfect gift is. But I'm telling you, this holiday season, don't let yourself get down and out. Don't believe for a second that you're not worthy of the perfect gift. Because each and every one of you are. And 
God's got a perfect gift to customize just for you. Just for me and just for you. Just for me and just for you. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you need this very hour. So let's receive that perfect gift. Can we? Can we? Amen. Amen. Would you stay out with us? Although he'll come to the guitar for me, brother. I just want to close by agreeing with you that you would receive the perfect gift that Jesus Christ has for you this very you okay? God has something just for you this Christmas season, this very year. And whatever that perfect gift needs to be, whether it's healing, maybe deliverance, maybe comfort and peace, you haven't seen it in a long time. Maybe you haven't felt it in a long time. You need that perfect gift. If that's you right now, would you close your eyes and just raise your hand real quickly so I can agree with you? Yes, yes, yes. Anybody else? Through 40, yes. Anybody else? Can you say yes? I see your hand. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there's several in the room. Yes. Yes. Jesus died on the cross so that you would have the perfect gift. God sent his son as the perfect gift. But today, because of his sacrifice, we can receive his perfect gift every day. We can walk in his perfect gift, and we can have that influence, just like Mary did. Mary received this perfect gift because she believed, so she received. Today, you can believe. Believe that you will have that perfect gift. Believe that you will have the healing that you desire. Believe that you will have the peace that you want. Believe that you will have the relationships restored that need to be restored. Believe that you will have the comfort that you haven't felt in a long time. Believe that you can have the peace that passes all understanding, the joy full of his glory. If you believe it, you can receive it. This morning, I want to pray for you. You that raised your hand, this is for you. You that didn't raise your hand, would you agree with me in prayer for the others that need this gift? They're believing today, and I believe that God will respond to their belief. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for those that raised their hand. Lord, you know each and every one of them. You know their condition. You know their heart. God, they are believing today for that perfect gift. Lord, just as Mary received her perfect gift because she believed, Lord, we know that these that are here this morning can receive their perfect gift because they believe. Lord, I pray that you would touch them right where they are. If they're believing for healing, we know you have it. If they're believing for peace, we know that you provide it. If they're believing for restoration, Lord, you are the restorer. So, God, we believe it and we receive it. God, you provide that perfect gift today in Jesus' name we pray. We will give you glory. We will give you honor. We will serve you for all of our days. Lord, just as Mary, as she gave birth to your son, Jesus Christ, Father, let us give birth to your spirit. Let others see your joy in us. Let others see your peace in us. Father, let it be influential in Jesus' name. We give you thanks. Everyone said, Amen. What a great time of the year. I love Christmas time and God's perfect gift. What more could we even ask for? We wouldn't have Christmas without Jesus, right? So I'm thankful for that. Just to recap a little bit on, on some announcements here. Um, right after service, we're going to be going out um, in our neighborhood passing out flyers, inviting everybody to come to church next um, Sunday, and um, so dress more for it, and please, we need your help getting this information passed out to our neighborhood here. Um, also, the uh, students, to get them to youth camp and to build the fundraiser, please feel free to buy several of those Burger King coupon booklets. Five bucks, you can't go wrong. If you get more than five dollars worth of food in there, so... Um, talk to anyone of the youth, Pastor Randy, anybody can help you, so um, we hope you'll do that. And then, um, wow, well, next Sunday is the uh, Christmas dessert uh, thing in the evening, so we need desserts, men, ladies, whoever is able to uh, bake, please see Christy for that and get signed up to bring a great dessert for us. And with that, on that note, we'll say a final prayer, and we will go on our ways. So if everybody can stand, please. Dear Lord, I am just so thankful for today. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for 
your son Jesus, who is our perfect gift. And during this season, Lord, I ask you to help us. Lord, just continue to remind us that Jesus is the reason for this, this season. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much. And we ask you, God, for your anointing to go upon each one of us as we pass out these flyers. Lord, we want to touch our neighbors. And we ask that, Lord, as we do this, that your anointing will be there and that you'll just bless through it all. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, everybody. We do need to stack the chairs, so if some of you need to get going, you're welcome to take a nap. We've got help that can stack the chairs and everything. Uh, we're not tearing down the stage, so all we got to do is stack these chairs. Uh, make sure you grab a map from Christy right over there. Remember, nobody will have the same map unless you're going in a group. There's several maps taken together in the same map. Let's go as a group, and then we won't double up, okay? So God bless you.